Hi, my name is Ramesh Soni, and I'm going to talk about product layout. Specifically, I will talk about assembly line balancing. If you recall, product layout is basically sequential arrangement of resources where things move in one direction. And the main job in product layout is balancing the assembly line so that you have a sequence of stations and they all have about equal amount of work. Some terms you need to know. Cycle time or tact time is the time that each workstation gets to finish its task. Also, if you are standing at the end of the assembly line, you will see a product coming out. So if each station does its work in one minute, then effectively, once things get going, you will have a product coming out every one minute. Task is something which cannot be broken down any further. So remember that task is something, a small element of work which cannot be fragmented anymore. And task time is the amount of time needed to complete the task by a well-trained worker. What are the steps in assembly line? And I'm going to go over these steps very quickly and we'll clarify these when we do an example. First thing, you need to have a precedence diagram. Second thing, you need to figure out what is an appropriate cycle time or also known as tact time. What is the minimum number of stations you will need for balancing this assembly line? Then you need to figure out uh, which heuristic you want to use. There are multiple heuristics. The largest operation time heuristic is a very popular one and is very effective in most cases. And there are variations of these two heuristics. The second one is largest number of following tasks and again uh, maybe in another example, I will illustrate how this large number of following tasks heuristic works. Determine the efficiency, how good is your assembly line balancing. And if it is not properly balanced or if you think it's not very efficient, you can try a different technique and see if you can rebalance for a better answer. So let's jump into an example. So you have a situation where you need to produce 288 units in an eight hour shift. Details of this particular example, the task and precedence is given in next slide. And we are being told to use longest operation time heuristic or rule, uh, longest operation time heuristic. So these are the other tasks. Task A requires 90 seconds and there's no predecessor. Task B requires 30 seconds and has no predecessor. C requires 70 seconds and follows A and so on. So the first thing first, let's draw a precedence diagram. So here are the task and predecessor requirements. And here's the diagram. Look at this. A and B, they have no predecessor. C follows A, C follows A, D follows A and B, so D follows A and B. E follows D, F follows C, and so does G, G follows C, and finally H follows E, F, and G, E, F, and G. So this is your precedence diagram. You cannot allocate a task which is not ready. That means the preceding task. Let's figure out the cycle time or text time. Well, let's do some thinking. So you were told that task times are in seconds, which means cycle time has to be in seconds. 
they should always be in the same unit. So task time so were 90 seconds, 30 seconds, 70 seconds, and so on. And therefore, cycle time has to be in seconds. Now recollect, in 8-hour shift, you need to make 288 units, as you've been told in the problem statement. 8 hours are really 480 minutes. 8 times 60 will give you 480. And 480 times 60 again will give you 288 zero zero seconds which means you must make 288 units in 28,800 seconds and if you do the simple math 28,800 divided by 288 will give you 100 seconds which means a unit should be coming out of the assembly line every 100 second to meet your production goal and that's the amount of time each station will get Okay, so cycle time is 100 seconds. All right. Now, what is the minimum number of stations you will need? Cycle time is 100 seconds. I'm reminding you once again. And if you had just one person doing all A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the tasks, you will need 390 seconds, which means one person doing all the job cannot produce all these units every 100 seconds. Okay, that will not work. So, you will have to create an assembly line with several stations, each requiring no more than 100 seconds. If you break the task up into these stations, you can have an assembly line going and you can have a product coming out every 100 seconds. So theoretically, you need at least 390 seconds divided by 100 seconds. You will need 3.9 stations. And even if it were to be 3.01 station, you will always round it up. So it becomes four. You will need at least four stations. You might need more, but you will need at least four stations, each with 100 seconds of task allocated to them. So let's begin with the line balancing and we are using longest operation time heuristic. If you recall, we have only two tasks which are ready at, to be allocated to begin with. So here is a little table that will assist us in balancing the assembly line. You will notice you have only task A and B which are ready. And since we are using longest operation time, we'll look at which one takes the longest time, 90 seconds, 30 seconds. So A takes the longest, we will allocate A first. Task A goes to station number one, takes 90 seconds. At this station, you still have 10 seconds left. Remember, each station gets 100 seconds. And after you're done with A, you can do B and C. Unfortunately, B and C, they take both of them take longer than 10 seconds so you cannot locate any more task at station number one this 10 second is going to be wasted so we will go to station number two and between b and c c takes longer therefore we allocated c and as soon as we do c you will notice we now can do b which was available previously and after we do c even f and g become available now B takes 30 seconds, F takes 60 seconds, and G takes 50 seconds. Obviously, strictly following the longest operation time heuristic, you'd like to allocate F, but you don't have enough time available at this station, and therefore you will say, okay, we'll bend the rule a little bit and allocate B at this station, because B will fit in station number two, because C took 70 seconds, you have 30 seconds left. So we allocate B at the station. And after you do B, the tasks which are ready are going to be D, G, and F. And again, you will have to go to now next station as you have used up all the time at station number two. Of D, G, and F, which one takes the longest? D, G, and F. F takes longest, so you allocate F next 
F takes up 60, 60 seconds. You have 40 seconds remaining. And after you do F, the only task available are D and G. And let's see, D takes 10, G takes 50, so G will not fit. You will have to bend the rule and allocate D next. And once you allocate D, you will notice E also becomes available along with G. And again, looking at E takes 30 seconds and G takes 50, G won't fit. So we'll, we'll bend the rule and allocate E because you still have 30 seconds left. So that will fit here beautifully. And now you will have to go to the next station. So G will be allocated next. G takes up 50 seconds. You have time remaining 50 seconds at station 4. And finally, you will allocate task H. And therefore, this is the plan. This is the assembly line. You will create four stations. Station number 1 will have task A. Station 2 will have task C and B. 3 will have F, D, E. And 4 will have G, H. And it looks like this is the best you can do because you are able to allocate all the tasks in four stations, which is the minimum you need anyway. So hopefully this makes sense to you. Good luck.